this entitled mum treats her children like an ATM. Whenever she wants money, she thinks she can demand it from them like they are her property. How will they hold on to the little money that they have left? Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. The backstory allowed a friend of a friend who was down on her luck to room with me for two years, so we did become close friends, as she needed to get away from her abusive ex slash father of her son. In hindsight, the fact her boyfriend at the time would not spring for a place for her to move in with him should have been a red flag for me. There's a whole other story regarding both the father and the boyfriends, plural, that I won't get into right now. Fast forward a couple of years, stuff happened, lost my job had to move back home, literally across the country, got rehired, still kept in contact with her, and since I couldn't afford it, $100 every couple of months to help her out wasn't hurting my finances while she was down on her luck. She was back living with her mum and on government assistance for a while, so it wasn't frequent enough that it didn't bother me. But after a while, I was getting tired of her begging to borrow some cash. Realized I never did tally the total amount and was shocked to find it was over $12,000 over the eight years. So I basically gave her an ultimatum last year. Essentially, I'm cutting you off at the end of the year, 2019. You have a year to get your act together. If you do, great. You don't need to rely on me anymore. If you still need help, then I'm just throwing my money into a black hole. I thought I was helping you get back on your feet, not letting you live off me. Whatever the case, come January 1st, I'm not responding to any request for money, period. Things were cool for the first half of the year, but then the latter half is when things went south. First, it was more frequent requests for money, like helping for the initial deposit for an apartment, as her new job didn't pay her yet, or groceries. Okay, critical life stuff I can accept, like she'll need a cell phone plan to handle email and such for job hunting. But then it was like requesting $500 in the span of two weeks in small chunks of $40 here, $80 there. Then one time, instead of asking first, she just sent a money request from her bank as if I was an ATM and would just blindly send it along. And if I didn't respond right away, she would spam my phone even though she knows I'd be busy working in meetings or commuting. A portion of it is on the subway, so I'd be offline for around 30 minutes. But obviously she can't wait that long. Cue the phrase we've seen in this sub for a lot of entitled parents. Failure to plan on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. Then the parent parts. There were incidents like asking to pay for her kid's medication because his dad forgot to pack it for his visitation. Why should I be paying for this? Not my kid. Shouldn't you be asking his dad? No, I'm not giving you $80 for a bus ticket for your son to visit you. I know you miss him, but I don't see it as a critical expense. I'm sorry, but maybe you should try deferring the visit till later when you're more financially stable. I'm sure your 12 year old son will understand. Then the kicker. This past Christmas, she had saved enough to buy a Nintendo Switch. Not, you know, saved up the money to handle surprise expenses or pay me back, not that I expect it, but went immediately towards a very expensive gift for her son. The reason she was contacting me, however, was that her ex-boyfriend, not the one from before, I've lost count which boyfriend, probably number eight at this point, had serious entitlement, anger, and mental issues, broke into her apartment, stole a bunch of stuff like the Switch, and pawned it. Thankfully, the police were able to get him, and I believe he's in jail now. However, she's still out a present. But instead of getting a cheaper present, or asking around other friends and family to pitch in, she contacts me first and asks for $200 to go towards the present. Obviously, I declined. I think she eventually settled on a gaming keyboard and mouse for him. Naturally, she uses the ruin Christmas line on me, which got me really ticked off. Her ex ruined it, not me. I don't really owe her anything. She's not entitled to my money. I'm not an ATM at her beck and call. Eight years is way too long to be helping this person. You'd think you'd realize after like six months, wait a minute, this person isn't getting back on their feet. They're using my generation generosity and taking advantage of it. And what that means is your kindness and generosity can't go to somebody else who actually needs it because this person is taking advantage of you. So don't feel bad when you need to cut somebody off when they don't appreciate what you're giving them. They're not trying to make any effort for themselves and their only response is that they feel that they're entitled to more. 
So this happened back in 2010 or 2011. I don't remember everything to the letter, but this is the gist of it. A little bit of backstory. I was 5 or 6 in age group of, I believe, 4 to 6 at the time, and it was time for the big egg hunt that the church put on every year. And when I say big, I mean big. This church was connected to a college campus, and we had two buildings for the church. One building was for the service and had four floors. One was underground, and it was where they had preschool and a nursery as well as offices, and was about 100 feet tall and was built by the church. In the second building was where all the classes from K to 12 were held, and was two stories tall, but had a big opening in the middle of the floors, which took up most of the space in that building. This church had 500 or so people attending per service. There were three services throughout the day, and my family went to the service that ended at 12 or 1 p.m. By the way, so on to the details of the big Easter egg hunt. The Easter egg hunt took place on a small grass part of the church where there were some bushes and stuff. Each kid was allowed to find 15 Easter eggs, in my age group anyways, since we were the youngest class of people. And for anyone who is wondering, the kid to adult ratio for the whole church was something like one kid to eight adults. So there were a lot of kids, with each age group getting older, getting less and less eggs. Trust me, this is all relevant to the story. Now we meet the cast. OP, me, a boy with way too big a mouth at the time, MLB, my little brother, four at the time, EK1 was the older brother I think, and EK2 the younger sister, T, the teacher of the class, a woman, I think in her late 30s, TH1, teacher's main helper, he was a male, college age I think, TH2, another helper, also male, and Karen. Take a guess. Now on to the story. The Easter egg hunt had just begun. Me and my little brother went off to find eggs together. All was fine and dandy until we lined up to go inside. The teacher and helpers would do a head count, as well as count our eggs to make sure kids had 15. If you didn't have your limit, they would give you some eggs they kept on hand to make sure everyone got 15. No more, no less. You could have baskets that you brought from home to find them, or they would give you a brown lunch bag so you would have something to keep them in. Most of the kids had the bags they gave out, including me and my brother and both the EKs. On our way in, both of them stopped like everyone else and got asked to count their eggs and tell them how many. Not only did these kids have too many eggs, no, 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 that would be too easy. They had filled their bags to the brim full of eggs and they had stuffed them into their pockets as well. Um, you guys have too many eggs. No, me didn't. Actually, you guys do. He then explains the rules and how many they can have. Mommy said take as many as we want because you can't stop us. Well, you guys can't have that many eggs, otherwise other kids won't have enough eggs. Well, that's not our problem. As I said, I just remember some of the convo and the gist of it. TH1 to TH2. Keep the line moving. I'll deal with these two. The room that we were in had one of the four walls completely made of glass that we would go through to go outside to do the hunt on a big patio kind of thing that connected to the grass where the hunt took place. And the glass door was directly across from the main classroom door. Okay, TH1, you guys should share and not keep all those to yourselves. OP, shut up. Both the EKs. Listen to your fat butt friend. You can't talk to my little brother like that. What's holding up the line? These. EK1 cut him off. This fat butt is being mean. Yes, he really said that. EK2 in agreement. Yeah. You're not allowed to say that here. What are you going to do about it, you fat bee? Also really said that. That is it. TH2 find their parents number and take away all their eggs. Yes, you had to be signed in with all sorts of ways to contact your parents in case of emergency. The entitled kids immediately start protesting while the rest of us go inside. TH1 takes over class while they wait outside with T. Their mum gets called and near the end of class, their mum finally comes to get them. Karen knocks on the door of the class. Yes? Hi, I got called to get my kids for something. Yes, one moment. TH2 to T through the glass door. Their mother is here. Finally, let's get them out of here. They walk through the class to get to the other door. EK1. Freak all you bees. That's enough of you. The teacher then opens the other door and leaves it open for whatever reason. So why did you call me? Your kids took way too many eggs and then EK1 cussed another student 
to me. So, that language is not allowed in this class, or any other class. I don't care. Now was it about too many eggs? I don't see any. I took the eggs away from them when they cussed at me. What? Why the frick would you do that? I told them they could have as many as they wanted. T closes the door, but that didn't do much for how loud she was being as the door had the soundproofing effect of a piece of paper. Now I know where they get their language from. You'll have to leave now or I'll have you removed by me and the other teachers. Help! This person's attacking me and my children! At this point, the whole class has stopped and is intensely looking at the door when a knock from the glass door happens. It was another teacher from another class. All rooms had the same setup. Basically, it was another TH asking what was happening. And then there was a crash coming from where the Karen was. They all rush out there and come back 10 minutes later when the class had actually ended and let us go when our parents came to pick us up. Basically, the crash was Karen flipping the long plastic folding table they had set up for signing in and out onto the ground and trying to pick it up and throw it at the teacher. She then was kicked out of the building by everyone that heard the crash and came out to help. I honestly wish I made this up, but I didn't, and no one ever saw that family again. Let this be a reminder to everyone that you truly aren't safe anywhere from the curse on this earth that is entitled people slash parents. I remember those sorts of events when I was a kid, and I wasn't the best at finding eggs, wasn't the worst either, but I do remember those bratty kids that would go around, especially to like all the little kids that are like, you know, two or three just huddling along, and they'll just run up and they'll just pinch them off them like just before they get them. And you're like, what are you doing? It's like a tiny little kid. This is probably their first ever Easter egg hunt and they just want to have that fun. We all know who those bratty kids were in our minds when we were 12 years old. And you just know that those are the ones who are going to grow up to be the next generation of entitled parents. This took place a few years ago when I was still in college for my bachelor's degree. For several years, I waitressed and cleaned houses and really pinched pennies putting any extra money into savings for college. I didn't qualify for any assistance because my parents claimed me as a dependent and they made too much money. But I am very lucky to not have student loans, having saved enough for working to pay as I went. The next year of my bachelor's degree, I was hardly living at home. I lived with my boyfriend most of the time, helping with those expenses. I also helped with things around the house, particularly for my mum who lived alone, paid all my own bills like car insurance and such, and at this point was buying all my own food slash toiletries. I'm explaining all of this for background, not at all to complain because I was happy to do so, and as an adult who was able, I felt it was my responsibility. Around rolled tax season, and I approached my mum, asking her if she could not claim me on her taxes this time, considering everything stated above. Her and my dad took turns each year claiming my brother and I on their taxes as dependents. I told her not being claimed would really help out with getting money for college to finish up my final year, as the money I saved was pretty much depleted. She agreed without any issues, and I couldn't have been happier. I don't remember specifics, but I was having some issues with financial forms online, and expressed my worries that I was having trouble figuring it out. Two days later, and with help from a university counsellor, it was all good and well. I don't even think a full week passed between our initial conversation and the conversation below, and the deadline for taxes was still a good ways off. I came to my mum's house, let her know I had gotten it figured out, and would be submitting my paperwork. She says, Oh, I'm so sorry, I thought you said it wasn't going to work out. Confused at her apology, I said, I was having difficulties, but I got some help and it's fine now. But I didn't think it would work, so I claimed you on my taxes and turned them in yesterday. I was quiet for a minute. She couldn't have followed up with me in those couple of days to confirm it wouldn't work out before filing? It isn't like I kept her waiting for weeks. <sighs> okay, whatever, it's okay. It can still be okay. So I asked her if she could give me the money that she would get from claiming me, since she wouldn't have been expecting it this time around anyway, and it would really help me out. I pointed out how I pay for all my own things and don't really live at home anymore, and that I've worked so hard. Well, honey, really I'm so tight on money now. I could really use the money. I know I don't talk finances with you a whole lot, but honestly, this would help me. I was dumbfounded and then quietly furious, but ultimately I thought, I don't want my mum to struggle, so it's okay, I'll figure it out. I tried really hard to not let it bother me until her tax money came in 
and she bought $1,000 plus worth of small home appliances. The most expensive being a vacuum cleaner when hers worked perfectly fine. In fact, she offered me her old one because it works perfectly fine, I just wanted an upgrade. In the end, my dad and stepmom felt so bad for me in this situation, they gave me a couple hundred dollars to put towards school, which was a blessing I didn't expect, but was so grateful for, though it barely made a dent in college tuition. Basically, that's where the story ends. I never really talk to my mom anymore about it because she has done so much that hurts me. I try to pick my battles. It was validation enough for me that the other people in my life saw it was wrong too. I think that's a really common thing for parents to claim their kids' as dependence as long as they can. If the kid's fine with it, then I don't see a problem with it. But if they want to start living their own life, then it's just completely selfish. You're basically stealing from your own children. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.